now to the fight against ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Last month, Iraqi forces and the U.S.-led coalition finally retook Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, after a brutal nine-month campaign. And the fight to retake Raqqa, the ISIS makeshift capital, is ongoing now, with Syrian militia pressing the fight, again with U.S. support. For more on where the battle against ISIS stands, I spoke just a short time ago with Brett McGurk. He's the special presidential envoy for the Global Coalition to Counter ISIS. It's a post he held under the Obama administration as well. I began by asking him how big a footprint ISIS has right now. Well, what's really more important is the, the trajectory. So if you go back to 2014, they were a, a, a you know, dramatically expanding movement. Uh, since then, they've lost about 70,000 square kilometers. And in the last six months alone, they've lost about 20 square kilometers. So one third of their losses in Iraq and Syria have taken place over the last six months. So uh, it's, it's radically shrinking. Uh, the people that are under their domain, less and less every day. You know, our operations enabled by coalition uh, forces, with Iraqi forces doing the fighting, Syrian Democratic forces doing the fighting, about five million people who used to be living under ISIS uh, are no longer living under ISIS. And more importantly, if you think about where we were back in 2014, the refugee and migrant flow, remember the you know, hundreds of thousands of people fleeing out of Iraq and Syria, we've actually now reversed that. So in Iraq, two million Iraqis are now back in their homes in areas that used to be controlled by ISIS. And even in Syria now, the first six months of this year, uh, we've actually seen, according to UN statistics, you know, Syrians beginning to return to their homes. That's a pretty uh, remarkable trend line that we want to we want to continue. Why has this progress uh, sped up? Why has this happened uh, this way in the last six months? Well, we have made a couple important changes. So uh, when, when President Trump came into office, about you know, three really key changes. Number one, and probably most importantly, was the decision to, to delegate a tactical decision-making authority uh, to the commanders in the field. And that has made a key difference. So this is part of a new initiative under President Trump. It's not part of a plan that was handed over by the Obama administration? Well, the, the rapid turn in decision making is something that is new and it's actually causing us to act with, with great ef efficiency and seizing some key opportunities. It makes a difference if, if decisions can be made immediately to seize those types of opportunities as they emerge. I saw a story today in BuzzFeed which says that the U.S. is much more deeply involved in Syria in terms of supporting those local forces than most people realize. Is that, is that a fair assessment? I think we've been pretty transparent. We're, we're supporting the Syrian Democratic Forces. It's a force that really has grown from uh, when way back in the Battle of Kobani a few years ago. Now 50,000 uh, Syrians under this force, about half of them Kurd, about half of them Arab. And uh, we are supporting them, enabling them, special forces, advisors. Uh, we also have some diplomats on the ground. This is something that Secretary Tillerson spoke to uh, here at the State Department a week ago. Uh, we have a small team of diplomats to help with humanitarian assistance, stabilization assistance. And this is very important because we are not there to you know, reconstruct cities. We're not there to do nation building type exercises, but we are focused on basic humanitarian support. About 300,000 uh, Syrians have now been displaced from the fighting in Raqqa. They have all flown north into the lines of the force that we're working with. We're helping uh, with humanitarian aid, supporting, supporting the United Nations. And basic what we call stabilization. And what that means is you know, the, the elements to help return people to their homes. Uh, number one, demining. You have to clear the streets of landmines. Right. Second, rubble removal, electricity, water, those sorts of things. We did the same thing in Iraq, and that's why we've seen this remarkable trend of Iraqis returning to their homes in areas that have been cleared of ISIS. This is really hard work. It's not glamorous, uh, but it's working. You're answering some of the questions I was planning to ask, so thank you very much for anticipating those. I do want to ask you, though, Brett McGurk, about the ceasefire uh, in Syria that the U.S. and Russia worked out. It's been pointed out that Iran was not part of that, and by ignoring or leaving out Iran's interests in the long run, uh, that that's going to have to be taken into consideration. Well, the ceasefire that was worked out in the Southwest, I'm glad you asked about this. It's a very important initiative, actually. And um, another example of how you know, some decisions have been delegated down. Secretary Tillerson really asked us to get after this opportunity that had emerged in the Southwest. And we negotiated really over a period of months with Jordan. A King Abdullah of Jordan was a key driver of this. And with the Russians throughout that Southwest corner of the country, very important corner of the country. It was a painstaking negotiation, meter by meter, 
mapping out what we call a line of contact between the Syrian regime forces and Syrian opposition forces. And since then, uh, we're well into the third week now, the fighting has virtually stopped. Uh, it's really, it's going quite well. And I think the reason this ceasefire is going quite well is because it was this really detailed negotiation about what we call this line of contact. Uh, the Russians have deployed some of their military police on the, on the northern side of that line, really right. to, de to deter violations from the Syrian regime. Uh, and so far it's going well. We're seeing people return to their homes in this area. So we want to make sure that trend line continues. Now, uh, the presence of the Ar Iranian forces, Hezbollah, some of the militia forces down in that southwest corner of the country is highly destabilizing. And that's not something that uh, we only believe. It's also something the Russians believe. So part of this agreement, there's a broader uh, aspect to it. This is something that uh, was very uh, well uh, worked out. Uh, we want to see stability in that area, which means getting Hezbollah out of certain areas. It means getting some Iranian-backed forces out of certain areas. Uh, and that's something that we continue to work on. Well, speaking of uh, uh, how complicated this is, it's not just uh, Iran, but Turkey is also a factor. We hear uh, the Turkish leader, President Erdogan, talking about uh, coming after the Kurds uh, inside uh, of Syria. Of course, the U.S. has been working alongside them. We know a number of uh, Turkish leaders have said they think you have been uh, too supportive of the Kurds. Uh, how much of a concern is that to you? So look, Syria is one of the most complex challenges uh, on the planet as we speak. And obviously, Turkey is a critical NATO ally. Uh, we are totally transparent with everything we do uh, with the Turks. Uh, we had a very big decision to make also early on in this administration of ex exactly how are we going to uh, get ISIS out of Raqqa. And quite frankly, we had two options. One option was to work with the Syrian Democratic Forces, which we're doing, uh, and which is going quite well. Uh, the second option, uh, quite frankly, was an option that Turkey would have supported, but would have required almost 20 to 30,000 American troops. So that's something uh, that we're not going to go back to that model. Uh, we think the model we're using now is more effective, more sustainable. Look, the coalition that uh, we lead is the United States. With 73 members now. Uh, the nature of any coalition, not every member sees eye to eye at all times. That's the whole nature of having a coalition. So certainly Turkey, other members of the coalition, we have disagreements, we work through them. And uh, I remain an optimist that we'll be able to work through these issues. But it sounds like there's still some uh, disagreements with the Turks. We have disagreements with the Turks. We have disagreements with a lot of our coalition partners. Uh, but as with any endeavor, uh, not everybody sees eye to eye uh, all the time, uh, which is why uh, we continue to work through very difficult issues. Brett McGurk joining us from the State Department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy.